so we're looking at our unit two ratios and proportions practice test. Today we're going to answer the questions and the explanation is provided. If you're not sure what problem we're on, fast forward until you don't see pink. Let's look at number one first. Number one says, which of the following is an example of a unit rate? Remember that a unit rate is some value over one. So that would mean that if we have five cans for $4, that is not a unit rate because it does not have a denominator of one. In option B, it says Anita ran one and a half miles in 30 minutes. That again does not tell us a denominator of one. That says 30 minutes. I would need in one minute how far she ran. C, 25, 24 miles per gallon. That means 24 miles per one gallon. That would be a denominator of one. So that's looking like our best option. Option D, $12 for two games of miniature golf. That again does not have a denominator of one, so our correct answer will be C. In number two, Mr. Sims gave his class 15 minutes to read. Jack read eight pages in that time. At what rate in pages per hour did Jack read? There are two ways that we can solve this problem. So I'm gonna squiggle my paper down the middle and I will show both options. You will only need to do one of the two options. In the first option, because it says in pages per hour, I'm gonna set up a proportion. Pages on top, so I'm given eight pages in 15 minutes. 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour, so I'm going to put 0.25 as my denominator because I'm going to keep my units in hours. On the right, I'm going to have X number of pages in one hour. Then I complete my proportion. That will give me 8 times 1 equaling 0.25 times X. 8 times 1 is 8, 0.25 times x is 0.25x. Then I need to get the x by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 0.25. Those cancel. I'm left with x equals 8 divided by 0 0.25 is 32. That unit is pages. So in one hour, this would say that Jack read 32 pages. Let's look the other way. We know that 15 minutes times four equals 60 minutes, which equals one hour. If we take eight times four, that equals 32. So our answer would be 32 pages per hour. It doesn't matter which method you use, both will give you the same answer. I'm going to pause for questions. Because 15 minutes times four gives us 60. There are 60 minutes in one hour. We're trying to find out how many pages per hour. Whatever we multiply to the amount of time, we have to multiply by the pages read. No. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Okay, so 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour. If you look at a clock, if you break it into four parts, the 12, the 3, the 6, and the 9. From the 12 to the 3, that's a quarter of an hour, that's 15 minutes. From the 3 to the 6, that's a quarter of an hour, that's 15 minutes. Um, when I adjusted this for the practice test, I changed the number of pages read, not the amount of time. Okay. All right, any other questions? About one or two? Okay, let's go ahead and move on to question number three.
Question number three says that 20 feet of 30 gauge wire cost $7.20. What is the price per foot? In this problem, it is intentionally written to make you guys think. We're given technically three numbers. We have 20 feet, we have 30 gauge, and we have $7.20. 30 gauge refers to the type or the size of the wire. That has nothing to do with what we're looking at. We're looking at the price per foot. So I'm going to set up my proportion price, which would be $7.20, over the number of feet, which is 20. That will equal x over 1 foot. Then I complete my proportion, 7.2. And I'm going to do it over on the side here. 7.2 times 1 equals 20 times x. 7.2 times 1 is 7.2. That equals 20x. To get x by itself and to figure out how many, how much you pay per foot, we're going to take both sides and divide it by 20. To get x by itself, 7.2 divided by 20 is 0.36. So we are paying 36 cents per foot. Questions about number three. If you're watching this video after our class period, please send your email or your questions to me via email. Number four. Target jeans are regularly $29.99. If sales tax is 8% and they are on sale for 15% off, how much is a pair of jeans? In this problem, we have to find the new cost of the jeans first. Then, we will be, then we will be calculating the sales tax. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to take the original cost. times the discount percentage that will give us the discount amount the original cost is $29.99 the amount of discount is 15% so that would be 0 0.15 that will equal um, a rounded value of $4.50 Okay, so we're not adding on that $4.50. Because it is a discount, we're going to take our $29.99, the original cost, minus our discount amount to get our new total. Original cost was $29.99 minus the $4.50 gives us $25.49. Now we're going to calculate the tax, which is the original cost, times the tax percentage. That equals the tax amount. $25.49. Sorry, guys, that was some terrible camera work times 0 0.08 gives us two dollars and four cents we're going to add the tax amount to our new tote to the new cost of the jeans to get our total price so I'm going to take the two dollars and four cents plus 25.49 That will equal $27.53. So the total for the cost of the jeans will be $27.53. Questions? Yes. Oh, sorry.
Yes. No matter what the, when you convert a percentage to a decimal, you move it two places. We don't know how to do anything to a percentage, so we're always going to convert it to a decimal first. Any other questions about number four? In number four, we had to find how much we saved on the pair of jeans. From there, we had to find out how much the jeans are going to cost after the discount. Because you do not pay tax on the original price, you pay tax on the discount, correct? Now, if you went to Target right now and jeans were on sale, you wouldn't pay tax on the original price, you'd pay tax on what you're paying for them, right? Okay. So we had to find the new cost of the jeans. Then we had to find the amount of tax we're paying on the jeans and add that to the cost. Add that to the cost of the item. Does that make sense? Kind of? Okay. If you want to set it up like a tax and tip problem, you would do the same thing, but instead of adding the cost times the tip, you would subtract that value, and you have to do that first. I would recommend dividing it up. Any other questions? Okay. Alrighty, let's look at number five. Number five looks confusing if you don't read it all the way through. In number five, it says the radius of a circle is proportional to its diameter. In the equation, r equals one-half d, what is a constant of proportionality? We know our constant of proportionality equation to be y equals kd. If we sub where y is our y value, k is our constant of proportionality, and that should be an x, I apologize, and x represents our x value. If we substitute in the equation that we're given, that would be r equals 1 half d. The value that we replaced k with is 1 half. So the constant of proportionality equals one half. All we're doing here is comparing our original formula to the to the one that we are given. Taylor. How did you get two? Because I think that one, if I can make a half to one, one D, and one R is a half, then two R's would be a Okay, that would be correct in terms of your mathematical thinking. But when we're looking for the constant of proportionality, we're looking at what you multiply D by to get the R. Yeah, so the constant of proportionality is one half. We're just looking at whatever, um, whatever's in that same spot in our equation. Is it always going to be like whatever you're multiplying d by? Okay. The constant of proportionality is whatever you multiply by that other variable. Right. This problem does not require any computation. All you're doing is looking for a, a relationship. On the test, I believe I left the equation the same, but the answer is multiple choice. So there's all kinds of different possibilities. Okay, number six. A lot of you guys noticed that I forgot to reword the way that the problem was written when I adjusted 
And I wanted to know what is equivalent or equal to 5 fourths. And I asked you to give me a decimal and a percentage. So as a decimal, 5 fourths becomes 5 divided by 4, which equals 1.25. As a percentage, the easiest way to do that is to take the decimal value, move that decimal point two places to the right, and you're left with 125%. You can also take 4 times 25, 5 times 25. That would give you 100 as your denominator, 125 as your numerator. And because a percentage is some number out of 100, that would tell you that our percentage is 125%. Either way, that's personal preference um, as to which, what order you do things in. Any questions about number six? Yes? Um, I did five fourths times two, and I got ten over eight. Why did you do five over four times two? So you found another fraction. Okay. So that's that's also true. It's multiple choice. Yes. You would choose any that are the same. On the test, there will be, I believe it's five multiple choice options. You need to choose all that are equivalent to the number that you're given. Also, a friendly reminder, don't memorize the answers because I changed the numbers. Why did you multiply by 25? Because 4 times 25 gives you 100, and a percentage is some number out of 100. So if you didn't convert to a decimal first and you were looking for the percentage, you could do it that way as well. Is what you're getting 4 times 25 gives you 100. Yes? You just changed that number. Like the words are the same, the numbers are different. Okay. It's very, very, very difficult to have negative values when you're talking about ratios and proportions. So, so no, I don't believe there's any negatives on this test. Okay, moving on, number seven. According to the data, 1 out of 29 students gets into trouble at school. What percentage or what percent of students never get into trouble at school? 29 is not an easy number to convert as a fraction to 100. So I'm going to suggest that for this problem you convert to a decimal first and then convert the decimal to a percentage. We're looking at the number of students that never get into trouble at school. We would take 29 minus 1. That would give us 28 over 29. 28 over 29 as a fraction or written as that ratio is 28 divided by 29. That gives us 0.9655, which is equal to... 96.55%. Because the data says that 1 out of 29 get into trouble, the problem asks what percent of students never get into trouble. So we have to subtract the total. What? For what? Uh, fine, they're on my desk. So, if we're looking at the number of students that never get into trouble at school, we're looking at the total number of students that this ratio represents minus the ones that get into trouble, and we're left with what's left. Yes? If you left it at 96%, that's fine. Um, I would prefer one decimal place at minimum to be a little bit more exact. But your, um, or if you would round, that would round up to 97%. I generally include like a one value 
um, you know, error amount. So if you were up a number, if you were down a number than what I had, I generally accept that due to rounding and when you round and things like that. So that would be fine. Okay, any other questions? Wait. Yes. Hmm? Okay. Moving right along. Number eight. Joe paid three dollars and fifty-four cents for seventeen oranges. If C represents the cost of the oranges and N represents the number of oranges purchased, write an equation to represent the situation. So we know that we're going to have to find the unit rate because the unit rate is the constant of proportionality. We're going to have the cost being equal to some number of oranges. So we need to solve for K. I'm going to do that over here to the side. We're looking for the cost of one orange. So we would have cost $3.54 over 17 equals X over 1. Then I need to solve my proportion. 3.54 times 1 equals 17 times X. That's 3.54 equaling 17x. I divide both sides by 17 to get x by itself. My 17's cancel and I'm left with x equaling 0 0.208 which I'm going to round up to 0 0.21. The reason I do that, we're talking about money. I cannot go three decimal places long with in terms of money and currency. We only have two decimal places, so we would need to round. I round up from 20 to 21 because the value after the zero is an eight. Eight's gonna bump that up to a one. So in our equation, the cost of our oranges is 21 cents times the number of oranges will give us our total cost. Questions? Yes? I need 20. Okay, again. What did I say? Okay. You cannot always round down. Sometimes you have to round up. <laughs> but again, if I take into account rounding error. So if your mistake was made due to rounding, for example, 20 instead of 21, I generally count it. If you are someone who always rounds down, we need to adjust. Yes. Okay, so we're, we're shifting back to number four. No, Should have. Like, you know how you do like the words? Mm -hmm. Would you like the words for number eight? Absolutely. For the proportion or for the equation? So, in number four, we took the cost over oranges equals X cost over one orange. So we're looking, we're given the cost for 17 oranges. We're looking for the cost of one orange to be our constant of proportionality. Okay. I'm sorry. It's X cost over one orange. Believe it or not, it does show up better in the video. And assuming that the uploading gurus are happy, it should be uploaded before we go to lunch today. No, I'm not editing out the questions. I will say that my microphone isn't good enough to be able to hear who's asking the questions, though. So it's really just me answering questions. All right, number nine. Number nine. The graph shows how the amount of paper 
recycled at a doctor's office depends on the number of weeks they have been recycling. Guys, that makes sense. The longer you recycle, the more paper you recycle. So what is a constant of proportionality? This graph, we know that it is, um, that it represents a proportion because it starts at the origin, which is zero, zero. It is increasing, that means it goes up as our x value increases, and it is in a straight line. So we knew that part. To find our constant of proportionality, we need to find a point. I'm going to use the point 1030. I need to know what y is when my x value is zero. So we're gonna take 30 over 10, which equals 30 divided by 10. That gives me three. So therefore, my constant of proportionality My constant of proportionality is 3. Yes? If you take 60 divided by 20, do you still get 3? Yes. So then, yes. So that goes back to the fact that it does not matter which point you use. I generally choose the first one because then my numbers are smaller. But you can use any point where the line where, where the line we're looking at completely intersects your x and your y grid. Yes? So it's only, you can only use the ones that like, when they like have a certain point. Yes, because otherwise we're estimating and we could end up with error. So we could end up with the wrong answer because what was 6 is actually 7, or what was, you know, 3, we thought it was 4. That would change our numbers, okay? So it's, it's best to, to do it that way. Question? Okay. Any questions about the front page? Numbers 1 through 9. <coughs> The, this is a test. You will have the opportunity to retest if needed, but let's assume we won't need to. Let's assume we won't need to. Okay, let's look at number 10. Number 10 says, a store purchases jeans at bulk to sell to customers. The store pays $22,000 for 75 pairs of jeans. The store charges 50% more than the purchase price to make a profit. How much will the store charge for each pair of jeans? So we're going to start by finding the cost of one pair of jeans. So we would start out with cost over jeans equals X over one pair of jeans. The cost is $2,200 over 75 equals X over 1. I cross multiply to solve my proportion. 2200 equals 75X. We get that by taking 2200 times 1 and 75 times X. I'm then going to divide both sides by 75 to get x by itself. 2200 divided by 75 gives us $29.33. So the store pays $29.33 for each pair of jeans. They have to make money, so they are going to charge you more than this. Our problem says that they charge 50% more. So I'm going to draw a squiggly to keep my work separate. We're going to take the store price times the profit percentage that will equal your price, or that will equal the um, amount of profit. We will add that to the store price to find our price. 
So the store price is $29.33. The profit percentage is 0 0.5. That equals the amount of profit. $29.33 times 0.5 is $14.67. With this problem, you have to round our original decimal answer is 0.665. Again, we round that up to 2.67. If your answer is off by a penny or two, I accept it due to rounding error. We're going to take the store price plus the amount of profit. To get our total. The store price $29.33 plus $14.67 will equal our total. So we will end up paying $43. We end up with 43.995, which would be $44. $44 for a pair of jeans sounds actually fairly reasonable. I wouldn't mind buying that. How do you get 14 plus That's like the 22, The $14.67. That is a percent of change question. So we have the store, we have the amount that the store pays for a pair of jeans. They have to make money. So there is a, they bump up the price that we pay. That amount that they bump up is 50%. So we pay 50% more than the store did. That means that we pay $14.67 more than what the store chart than what the store is charged. We add those two values together to get the total that they charge the customer. I did something. Okay, how did you do it? I got 4399. Uh, well, 43.99. Okay, right, rounding error. So I did like the, um, I did the proportions and stuff, and then after I did 29.33 times 0.50 equals x, and then x plus 29.33. That's, that's the same thing so we did. What would x be? Whatever I get for 22,000 divided by 75. So x, you said 29.33 times 0.05, that's your amount of profit. I did 0.50. Same thing. Same thing. A zero after the five isn't necessary, so I just didn't write it. Right. X is equal to the amount of profit. So you did the same thing. We just worded it slightly differently. That's fine. Yeah. Same thing. Okay. Did you get the correct answer? Okay, how did you do it? I did it 2,200 times 0.50. Okay, and then you divided that by 75? No. And then I added okay. the, the answer to that plus 2,200. Yep. And got 3,200. Okay. And then I divided that by 75. That's fine. You found, the, you found how much the store is going to make when they sold all 75 pairs of jeans and then found the unit rate. We, yeah, so when we found the unit rate first and then we found out how much the store was gonna make. You just flip flop those two steps and that's fine. It's fine. That will always work, yes. Yes. No, you can just put the 44. I am going to encourage you to make sure that you put a dollar sign in front of it to make sure that um, whoever's looking at your work, whether it's now or 10 years from now, that they are aware of what you were solving. Okay? So make sure that you include those units, but other than that, it really doesn't matter. Okay, other questions?
Alrighty. Number 11. The cheerleaders sold wreaths to make money for uniforms. Last year, they charged $20 per wreath and sold 200 wreaths. This year, they charged or $25 per wreath and they sold 60 wreaths, or 160 wreaths. I'm sorry, I can't read this problem. What is the percent decrease in the number of wreaths sold from last year to this year? In this problem, the cost of the wreath does not matter. Let me say that again. The cost of the wreath does not matter. They want to know what the percent of change was in the number of wreaths sold. So we're going to, um, being that this is a percent of change problem, we're going to put the change over the original. That equals X over 100. The change, we went from... 200 to, to 160, so our change is 40. Our original is 200. That equals X over 100. I ran out of space. 40 times 100 equals 200 times X. 40 times 100 is 4,000. That equals 200 X. We divide both sides by 200 to get x by itself. Our 200s cancel to leave us with x. 4,000 divided by 200 equals 20. I don't want to leave my answer as 20 because it wants to know what is the percent decrease. So my answer should be a percentage. So that would be a 20% decrease. Yes. Um, I did like the, so it says last year, so I did the 200 minus 160, and then you get 40, and then I divided it by like the first year for 200, and then I got 20%. Technically, you could do it that way, but I prefer that you do it this way. Mm -hmm. it, if, um. listen. Again, technically you can do it that way. I prefer that we use this way, but do what makes sense to you. Okay? okay? So I can do this way. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anytime you're solving a proportion, it doesn't matter what type of proportion it is, it doesn't matter what the situation is, you're going to cross multiply. Yes. When we have a percentage change problem, we're looking, we start by finding the amount of change, we put that value over the original amount. Then we set that equal to x over 100 because we're looking for a percentage. The amount that was changed, we went from 200 wreaths to 160 wreaths. 200 minus 160 gives us 40. Our original number of wreaths was 200, so 200 goes on the bottom. That's still equal to x over 100 because we're looking for a percentage. We cross multiply, so 200 times x give, is here, 40 times 100 is here. When you combine like terms, you're, you're left with 4,000 equaling 200x. You divide both sides by 200 to get x by itself. x is equal to 20, which is a 20% decrease. Yes? So for mine, um, I because I subtracted the 40 minus 200, so would it, since it's a decrease, do you use that? Or like if it was an increase, I would use the 160, like the new one. No matter what, we use the change in the original. Depending upon if the original is bigger or smaller, tells us if it is an increase or a decrease. Okay. All right. Number 12. Luke's mom gave him $17 to buy candy. 
Lucky Luke. If tax is 8% of the candy amount, how much can he spend on candy? You need to write an equation and solve. So, the first thing that we need to do, we have to find what the amount, we have to find the amount of tax, what that amount is of the money that he has available to him. So, I would look at this as um, finding the total amount for a tax problem, which would be original cost. Plus the original cost times 0 0.08 that equals our total. Sorry. We don't know the original cost. And our total is $17. So, we know that at most, our original cost is going to be $17, correct? So, I'm going to do 17 times 0 0.08 equals 17. 17 times 0 0.08 is $1.36. I have to get x by itself, so I'm going to subtract $1.36 from both sides. So then x is equal to $15.64. So the most he can spend on candy is $15.64. Yes? Because we're looking for the amount of candy that we can buy. Right. So the amount of tax that we paid is $1.36. That's the most he can pay in tax. Because our total is going to be 17. He has $17. He's not he doesn't have $17 plus tax. He has $17. So he has to spend less than that to cover the amount of tax that has to be paid. Does that make sense? Other questions? I took the maximum amount of money that he had, which was $17. I subtracted the amount of tax that he was going to pay, which is $1.36. I subtracted on both sides. So I took the dollar thirty six minus the dollar thirty six to get X, and I took seventeen minus the dollar thirty six to get fifteen dollars and fifty four cents. No subtraction. Any other questions? Okay. Number thirteen. This equation shows how a sapling's height depends on its age. Remember, a sapling is a little tree. The variable A represents the age of the sapling in years, and H represents the height of the sapling in inches. How old was the sapling when it was 20 inches tall? So, all I'm going to do is what we call plug and chug. 20 equals 4A. I divide both sides by 4. Those cancel, and I'm left with 5 <coughs> equals A. So, the sapling was five years old. Okay. So, all we're doing here, we're given an equation that the height equals four times the age. If we're given a height, we're solving for the age. So the height was 20, the 4 
is our constant of proportionality. That's not going to change. That's still 4. We're solving for A, which is the age. To get the age by itself, we have to divide both sides by 4. That gets us A by itself, and 20 divided by 4 gives us 5. You multiplied instead of divided. Okay. All right, other questions? Okay. Number 14. The population of a school is expected to increase 8.7% next year. If P represents the current population, which of the following equations could represent the population of the school next year? So, I'm sorry? Okay. This one, our correct answer is going to be D. We're, I'm sorry, it's going to be C. We're looking at the way that because this is just 8.7. So 8.7 kids plus the current population. The, if we take the percentage times the current population, then we would find the number of students that is expected. Okay. Fifteen. Scale model of a train is one inch to 15 and a half feet. One of the cars of the model train is four inches long. What is the length and feet of the actual train car? So we have a proportion. Remember that we keep the units the same. So I'm going to use inches over feet equals inches over feet. If we have... 1 inch over 15.5 feet, that would equal 4 inches over X. Then I'm going to cross multiply and solve my proportion. That would be 1 times X equals 15.5 times 4. That would say that X equals... 62 feet. Because x is attached to the 1, it's nice and simple. Questions about number 15? Why would you put the x on the bottom so high? Because we're looking for the length in feet. And the way that I set up my proportion, I put feet on the bottom. You could have flip-flopped them and done feet over inches. It's up to you. Okay. Say so this value should be getting larger because the scale is 1 to 15 and a half and the model train is 4. So you're going from 1 to 4, we're going to have to increase this value. Okay. If one of your values is 1 and that's what's changing, then that's fine. But if it's not always going to be like that. Okay. All right. And number 16, we're, oh, we're essentially looking for the opposite. We want to know how long the model would be for a train car that is 21 feet long. So I'm going to start out the same way. 1 over 15.5. That equals this time x over... 21. So I have 21 times 1 equals 15.5x. 21 times 1 is 21, so I'm going to divide both sides by 15.5. Those cancel. 21 divided by 15.5 
gives me 1.35 inches equaling x. 